Hello, good morning friends, we are here uh, in the concluding uh, lecture on uh, rate processes. So, uh, so in this uh, series of lectures, uh, what we have learnt and uh, what is the hope? So, that we, uh, we should uh, have uh, an overview on that. So, uh, in this uh, pieces of lecture, so we uh, th this is the outline that we started with. We gave this outline at the very beginning <coughs> that uh, this uh, series of lecture will uh, have uh, like uh, these topics mainly reaction rates and rate laws. We already discussed on this. Then effect of temperature on reaction rate, another topic that is uh, how temperature is going to affect the reaction rate. <coughs> then we uh, went to complex reactions that is uh, reactions can be comp uh, simple may be complex. So, we discussed uh, uh, examples of complex reactions and their corresponding you know kinetic uh, uh, descriptions. Then uh, theories of reaction rates, then kinetics of some specific reactions, we dealt with uh, that. Then catalysis is a very important thing, very important you know aspect in uh, especially in uh, chemistry, industrial chemistry, biological chemistry and many places catalysis plays a very, very crucial role. Okay. So, we discussed on that. that and uh, catalysis uh, like uh, biocatalysis we also discussed. Then uh, we talked about you know introduction of uh, fast reactions, the reactions which are completed you know uh, in a uh, very short time like uh, in a moment, moment like uh, maybe within say 1 nanosecond maybe or maybe uh, 1 millisecond okay millisecond or even less than that maybe in microsecond okay so faster than nanosecond uh, like picosecond or uh, uh, or maybe uh, femtosecond those are under ultra fast processes but uh, uh, fast reactions could be like millisecond microsecond like that okay so uh, so th uh, means those uh, fast reactions are very difficult to probe so we talked on uh, how to how to uh, follow those uh, reactions. Okay. Then reactions in solution, ultra fast processes uh, we discussed and finally, we dealt with reaction dynamics. Now, the textbooks which, uh, uh, which was uh, you know which I recommended apart from these books maybe you can consult other textbooks as well. Okay, or maybe uh, good physical chemistry textbooks you can uh, you can follow. One is uh, that I recommended is Chemical Kinetics and Reaction Dynamics by Houston, Paul Houston. Then uh, Chemical Kinetics and Dynamics by Steinfeld, Francisco and Hayes. Uh, third one was Principles of Chemical Kinetics by House. Then Tutorials in Molecular Reaction Dynamics by Valance and Broward. It's a it is a nice book and uh, molecular reaction dynamics by Levine, Raphael D. Levine. So, these books you can uh, consult apart from other uh, apart from these books you can consult other textbooks as well. Okay. Now, why, uh, why is chemical kinetics? Because chemical kinetics affects everyday life and it determines how fast insects walk, how quickly plants and animals grow and even how fast hair grows on your head. So, this everything I mean everything is related to chemical kinetics okay, or maybe biochemical kinetics. It is very important in chemical processes, selectivity, activity of chemical uh, 
reactions determines how uh, well chemical processes uh, will work. Okay, so very important. That's why it is it is it is a very important uh, topic in process chemistry. Like what reactions can lead to desired products? What side reactions are possible? Is it going to affect uh, the main uh, reaction of our interest? Yes or no? Or if it is there, how to you know get rid of that problem? Okay. And also, of course, what are the rates of such processes? Okay. Next is uh, conditions, which is very very important. Whether the reaction is possible in gas phase, whether the reaction is possible in aqueous phase, non-aqueous phase and so on. And if the reaction is possible, then uh, what are the factors that are responsible for you know controlling uh, the rate of the process? That is factors on which uh, rates are dependent, okay, like temperature, pressure, Con, uh, concentrations. Okay. Uh, how this this is going to affect? These are going to affect, uh, you know, the reaction. That is reaction condition. Also, solvents very important. Next is uh, uh, catalyst. If uh, this reaction is catalyzed, then whether it is a normal catalytic reaction, then it is an autocatalytic reaction, or maybe. Uh, if there is a poison for the catalyst that we should also know that suppose a uh, some because of some some secondary agent this uh, catalyst is uh, are poisoned so reaction you know rate is uh, decreased so these are the things that uh, we should look into and these are the uh, parts and pieces of uh, chemical kinetics and uh, rate process especially rate processes because we are dealing with rate processes in in chemistry rate processes could be some are some other places also or some other you know um, subject also like you know physical rate that we are not going to discuss out here okay that is rate of flow of something that we are not going to discuss over here like flow of material okay so maybe we are not here. What we are interested in is uh, everything means everything uh, related to rate processes in chemistry and chemical systems. Okay. The adjective kinetic originates from Greek kinetikos. That in turn originates from Greek kinetos, which means moving. So it is something moving. The word kinetics is used. In physical and life senses to represent dependence on time, dependence of some of something on time, dependence of uh, in physical uh, science, uh, you know, or maybe uh, chemical sciences, so dependence of uh, something on time. In physical science, uh, in chemistry, dependence of concentration. Chemical kinetics or kinetic rate process in, is uh, in chemistry is a branch of chemistry that is dealing with rate of change of concentration of reactants in chemical reactions. So, that is uh, that what we are going to going to uh, you know you know learn I mean what we, we already learned in, in this uh, in this uh, series of lectures. Okay. So, uh, uh, then we uh, also uh, discuss this point. I mean, uh, thermodynamics and kinetics. Is there any tussle between them? Whether thermodynamics is more important or kinetics is more important? Okay. Uh, apparently, it looks like thermodynamics, uh, you know, uh, controls everything. Okay. But at the same time, we should uh, remember that even if a process is thermodynamically feasible because of its uh, uh, very low uh, speed i mean uh, very low rate maybe uh, maybe uh, the substance is not degraded okay so that's why 
kinetics and thermodynamics for a chemical reaction these are you know somehow interlinked together okay uh, like two parallel threads running uh, you know parallel to each other okay reactions uh, can be one of the following like i told that uh, which is not thermodynamically favored reactant favored thermodynamically favored which is product favored but not kinetically favored which is a basically a slow process or kinetically favored it is a fast process that is kinetically very fast so that's why you know as i told you that thermodynamics and kinetics they should you know should be considered you know parallel you know in dealing with uh, uh, rate processes in chemistry in chemical system so and thermodynamics tells us which that means thermodynamics tells us which direction reaction will go and kinetics tells how quickly it will go okay whether it is slow or it is fast so the, the, that's what uh, pretty much related to you know thermodynamics and kinetics aims for studying rate processes at macroscopic level you, you have to define rate of reaction order of reaction and rate law okay and uh, we have to examine how rates and orders are determined so we, we determine rates and orders for chemical reactions so we define rate of reaction then order of reaction and also rate law for any 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 chemical process and microscopic molecular level what do you want to want to learn here i mean what we what we learned here is the uh, is the you know predict a plausible mechanism from experimental observations maybe uh, rate laws okay rate equations we would we would we would like to you know mm, formulate a plausible mechanism okay so that is pretty much uh, what is related to the to the to the aims of this and especially at the, at the molecular level of understanding so macroscopic uh, at, at, in macroscopic level measurable parameters are pvt and microscopic levels you know parameters are hard to you know uh, measure directly it is very difficult because microscopically you have to pick up you know certain molecules and then you have to find out what is the speed it is difficult okay so macroscopically it is somehow you know some it, it is easy but uh, microscopically uh, the parameters which are which are important like uh, speed of molecules what we what we talked in 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 uh, collision theory so collisions are responsible for chemical reaction to occur so so uh, uh, so like uh, these parameter like uh, like uh, speed of molecule is hard to find out okay so anyway these are the these are pretty much what is uh, related you know i mean what you know pretty much uh, the uh, aims and objectives okay so chemical kinetics means uh, as i told you like these things already i have talked about that uh, feasibility and course of reaction like reaction rate i you know discuss like this way you can you can uh, uh, like uh, like write the reaction rate that is rate of disappearance and rate of appearance okay and it is basically you know this rate equation is nothing but the relation between rates of loss or production of uh, certain uh, you know chemical certain substances maybe maybe substrate or maybe a product okay so and uh, we discussed uh, reaction rates and stoichiometry relation between stoichiometry and reaction rate and the relation was like uh, like pretty much like this for a general reaction you can write like this stoichiometry alpha beta gamma and eta these are the stoichiometry so you can you can write you can relate relate this for, for a balanced chemical reaction okay okay next uh, measuring of reaction rate next question next question which we discussed was uh, how to measure the reaction rate and it is not uh, not very trivial you know sometime it is difficult to 
find out. If it is a very slow reaction, then maybe it, it is easy to find out. But uh, it is a, if it is a moderately fast reaction, then uh, maybe uh, various methods can be employed. Like uh, one is method of initial layers. That is, at the very you know, you you can you can plot concentration versus time. Okay, and you take slope at different times. So you can this is concentration versus time. So that will give you give you uh, the you know that will give you the uh, uh, rate maybe at, at different instants. Maybe maybe there are there are methods that I that I already discussed method of integrated rate laws. You you devise the uh, rate law and then you integrate. I mean, if you uh, devise your uh, in, uh, differential equation and then you integrate to find a relation between the concentration of your reactant and the time. Okay, and uh, then um, uh, you know you put your put in your uh, necessary uh, inputs and then find out uh, the rate constants. Okay, that may be an another way. So the goal of study of reactions kinetic is the study of the chemical reaction, balance the chemical equation, write the rate law, find respective uh, the ith rate constant exp and exponents uh, using uh, using various methods like methods of initial rate, method of integrated rate laws, and uh, and so on. I discuss so many uh, methods of finding out, and then uh, solve the concerned differential equations like. Uh, uh, that will you know uh, that will uh, uh, end up in getting you the informations related to the kinetics of a particular reaction rate constants rate law half life okay and then also of course the plots concentration versus time maybe ln concentration versus time okay now two important facts that has to be explained whenever Whenever uh, uh, we deal with any chemical reaction, okay, the experimental fact is reaction rate uh, that I mean rate constant increases with temperature. Okay, why it is increasing? So we should have a have a justification of that. Okay, and uh, another important point that one out of ten to the power ten collisions may be may lead to reaction. So there are so many collisions, but not all all, all of them are effective. Okay. So, to react molecules have to collide and the collision frequencies is typically 10 to the power 13 collision, 30 collisions per second for molecules in gas phase. Okay? And uh, if each collision yielded a product molecule, then the reaction rate could have been 10 to the power 6 mole per second or, or even more. But you know in reality, uh, gas phase reactions have uh, much less uh, value like, uh, like maybe 10 to the power 1, maybe 1 mole per second like that. So, so this these are much less. Okay. So, so in order to explain this fact, so we have to we have to have justification why it is like uh, uh, if, it, if it is based on collision theory then why it is uh, so less, what are the factors, so why when, when temperature is increased rate constants are increased and uh, if you if you rise the temperature if you uh, increase the temperature by 10 degrees then rate constants are generally increased by 2 to 3 times a factor of 2 to 3 so this we wanted to explain this we wanted to justify based on you know certain available physical models okay so this is um, these are the two important things <coughs> that that we should uh, have in in our mind so Theoretical models, as I told you, that we <coughs> we used uh, different available theoretical models to justify. One is uh, very you know popular, that is collision theory, based on kinetic molecular theories of gas. That whenever you you have uh, uh, a a container full of gas molecules, then there will be collision between between them. Okay, and it is thought that collision is responsible for the reaction to occur. Okay, that that is the that is the postulate that collision is responsible for reaction. And next question comes that uh, that whether all collisions are effective because as I told you that there are uh, you know but um, there are only out of 
uh, 10 to the power 10 one collision may be you know fruitful ok. So, why it is so? So, that means there must be something inherent so, that we discussed that not only all collisions are effective ok. Uh, collision theory considers that such energy I mean the energy which is uh, required for reaction to occur is provided by kinetic energies of molecules upon their collision. So, that means for a reaction to occur uh, a definitive amount of energy must be must be supplied and then we introduce the concept of activation energy. What is activation energy? Activation energy is the minimum amount of energy that is required for the react I mean that must be acquired by the molecules or, or the atomic species to undergo uh, chemical reaction ok. And uh, importance here one more important point is that the orientation is very important. I mean suppose if you have a collision of this sort that may lead to chemical reaction, but if the collision is like this maybe reaction will not take place. So, that means, orientation factor is, is another important thing that we you know we should include and mean that has been included over there ok. And uh, uh, so, that means, not all collisions are effective in, in bringing out uh, bringing uh, chemical reaction. Then we introduced a uh, transition state theory and an unobserved activated complex is proposed here. Okay, an activated complex is formed that is the, that is a transition ex, uh, uh, state uh, uh, and uh, this transition state is there in between your reactant and product ok. And it is thought that this activated complex is short lived means it was in, it was thought in that way and then it is slightly reactive and maybe out of many vibrational modes one uh, mode is converted to you know converted to translational mode maybe maybe low frequency high amplitude mode ok. So, it is short lived and lived and it is in equilibrium with the reactant and then slowly it is converted to product that is uh, out of its many vibrational modes maybe one is converted to translation which is responsible for the passage from reactant side to the product side. So, this way we try to justify I mean theoretically we try to justify uh, reaction I mean reaction rate and uh, effect of temperature I mean implication of uh, of these theory uh, I mean uh, we try to uh, apply this theory, theory to justify and effect of temperature of course, we we, uh, we talked in terms of uh, this Arrhenius uh, uh, Arrhenius expression k is equal to a into exponential minus a by active where a is the activation energy. And you discussed what is E A in terms of a uh, in terms of the potential energy diagram like this. So, this is your forward activation energy E A, this is E A ok. And uh, it is clear from uh, from this expression that if you increase temperature your since it is minus E A by R T. So, K is going to be increased. So, using this this expression using this and E A is called the activation energy it is in kilo joule per mole or maybe in joule per mole and A is the pre exponential or maybe the frequency factor ok. Now, uh, this uh, using this expression you know we can find out R in, I mean uh, the activation energy by doing the experiment by carrying out the experiment may be at uh, 2 or 3 different temperatures ok. I mean we, we find out the rate constant at 2 to 3 different temperatures and then we plot L and K versus 1 upon temperature which will uh, you know from the from your like uh, from the plot you can find out this uh, activation energy ok. That is from the slope you can get the activation energy and from the intercept you will be able to find out the pre exponential term. So, it is indeed interesting that we are able to find out you know uh, the activation and that is the barrier height which is a very important thing very important parameter in chemical reaction ok. So, we discussed uh, then we discussed uh, elementary reaction and whenever there is a question of elementary reaction then comes the question of uh, order and molecularity. So, order and molecularity is basically order is an experimentally determined quantity ok. 
it is the sum of the power terms that is involved in the rate expression and it can be fractional but molecularity is the is the number of species that that is involved that is involved in a, in a in an elementary step so it has to be it has to be a whole number it cannot be fractional okay so bimolecular unimolecular uh, uh, you know reactions could be there and uh, we in 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 that uh, uh, heading we discuss this unimolecular lindemann mechanism and its pressure dependence uh, of uh, reaction that we also discussed then uh, whenever there is a elementary set of elementary reaction then comes the question of steady state that is a reactive species which is responsible for for further reaction to proceed that is in that is in equilibrium i mean that, that is that is uh, that will have a steady state that is whose concentration uh, should not change with with time so we we apply steady state approximation to find out <coughs> the rate expression okay and we we using that we we can find out the uh, rate equation for some complicated reaction that is uh, having many steps <coughs> that is for complex reaction then we discussed uh, polymerization reaction okay so maybe radical polymerization reaction we discussed this thing in in detail okay and with all these with all these ideas like uh, we 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 came to uh, came to reaction mechanism that is mechanism for uh, chemical reaction like like if you think of uh, uh, think of uh, say hydrolysis of ester okay so whether protonation of your uh, if it is an acid catalyzed reaction whether protonation onto onto the carbonyl oxygen is the rate limiting step or the attack of your nucleophile is the rate limiting step okay so th there are various ways you can you can uh, you can uh, find out whether um, i mean which one is the rate uh, rate determining uh, uh, part i mean rate determining uh, uh, step so from that you 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 can you can tell i mean whether whether the your protonation or maybe the nucleophilic attack is the slow step or not okay so that gives you the idea of i mean uh, that gives you uh, pretty much what is the what is the mechanism of a of a reaction okay and also we we talked about photochemical reactions where photon photon is you know involved okay photon is one of the ingredients i mean maybe you can think that photon may be your your basically uh, reactant so when you you know when you shine your substance with photon maybe it is it is photo excited then photo excited substance i mean chemical maybe it undergoes some uh, some reaction maybe pericyclic reaction maybe photochemical you know transformation okay where photon is involved okay uh, then we discussed you know catalyst and catalysis okay and uh, its role in 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 various like various uh, places so catalysis is you know that catalyst basically uh, 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 provides an alternate path having uh, having i mean requiring lesser activation energy okay and thereby rate is increased i mean if activation energy is less naturally you know rate constant i mean if you if, if you recall arrhenius expression so if activation energy is somehow in, uh, you know reduced then the rate is expected to be more so catalyst is important so it provides alternative path so catalysis and catalyst so many types of catalyst are there maybe homogeneous catalyst or maybe heterogeneous catalyst that they, those are used in industrial synthesis maybe like i discussed uh, ammonia and other synthesis okay so so that they are uh, in uh, means uh, heterogeneous catalysts are used in homogeneous catalyst there are plenty of examples and uh, this is very role of catalyst is very important so uh, we also discussed uh, bio catalysis okay uh, uh, there is a typo anyway uh, heterogeneous catalysis homogeneous catalysis and uh, mechanism okay uh, mechanism um, of catalysis that you also discussed so when it is the uh, question of catalysis mechanism catalysis we discussed bio catalysis bio catalysis means uh, in that case catalyst is 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 a is a biomolecule okay large biomolecule it's a protein called enzyme so 
it has got a specific you know structure which binds or maybe it has got a specific pocket which binds your you know uh, your this uh, uh, substrate okay into its pocket and then it does the reaction and then uh, when the reaction is completed then it is released so this way it is used up so catalyst is used up okay it is regenerated and then it is used up so it's a cyclic way and we also discussed you know <coughs> enzyme inhibition like you know, uh, uh, means uh, these inhib inhibitors are basically you know <coughs> they tend to impair enzyme action that is catalyst uh, catalyst action. Okay, so we discussed this in in detail. So it is it is this part is also you know discussed. We discussed fast reactions. Okay, <coughs> fast reactions means uh, like uh, as I told you that when the reaction is very fast then you know ordinary uh, um, methods like ordinary methods like uh, you know what we do in laboratory burette pipette then uh, color reactions maybe titration these are not you know very useful because the moment you start doing <coughs> your titration by taking out some amount of aliquot by that time your uh, reaction is over so titrometric or you know classical you know classical methods are not very useful so that's why you have to we had to means a device alternative uh, way alternative ways means uh, like techniques alternative techniques like flow methods like uh, stopped flow plug flow these are the methods that i already have discussed and uh, uh, it it may, may you know <coughs> use absorption technology i mean technique or maybe emission spectroscopy okay uh, relaxation methods are also used temperature jump methods are used and uh, last one which i discussed in detail that is the flash photolysis and the modern version of it is uh, laser uh, flash photolysis so i discussed and typical time resolution is much improved but on the point is that uh, you know your substance uh, you know uh, that should uh, absorb at a at a given wavelength so otherwise you cannot uh, cannot detect it your product has to absorb okay so that means it, it relies on the on the on the applicability of uh, spectro spectroscopic determination of the of the of the of the chemical i mean of the substance which is uh, generated due to chemical reaction okay so flash photolysis is a very very uh, you know efficient method uh, by which you can you know uh, you can look into the fast processes fast means moderately fast and its time resolution it, it is you know determined by electronics used maybe the detector and typical time result and also of course the laser pulse width and like it is typical of the order of several nanosecond like about 5 to 10 nanoseconds generally indiac lasers pulsed indiac lasers are used for laser flash photolysis so and uh, its time resolution is uh, several uh, nanosecond okay that is not below nanosecond <coughs> okay then we uh, we you know talked about this ultra fast processes because when it is the question of time resolution in in flash photolysis then we are limited by by the detection system and also by the laser pulse so flash photolysis uh, you know uh, it is uh, flash photolysis is in, uh, you know it is it is the uh, bottleneck i mean general flash photolysis so we had to use we have to you have to have some modern uh, version of it which is called a pump probe technique where you use even faster lasers even faster lasers like you know uh, picosecond lasers <coughs> or maybe femtosecond lasers okay and using that i mean uh, due to the advent of fast lasers <coughs> and of course when when laser came into into science i mean into uh, for the, for the for the use of uh, you know research i mean mankind then you know uh, uh, the overview of uh, you know detection uh, limit i mean over, overall detection limit is is much much increased i mean limit is increased means we we can go down to faster time scale so that you know flash footless is the first step laser flash flash photolysis it is a little bit further uh, ahead and then uh, ultra fast uh, lasers advent of ultra fast lasers you know and their application in <coughs> spectroscopy is is very very useful 
and in this uh, under this heading we uh, discussed uh, this uh, you know this palm probe spectroscopy where a pump laser is used and a probe laser is used. So, it is a two color experiment. So, ultrafast lasers using ultrafast laser we can do palm probe. It may be two color, it may be, it may be one color. Okay. And because of uh, the faster time scale, it is uh, bandwidth is more, wavelength bandwidth is more. So, you can probe uh, for uh, more wavelengths. <coughs> and using this, uh, using this ultrafast spectroscopic techniques may be, uh, may be using using fluorescence of conversion and related techniques, you can follow faster processes like solvation dynamics or maybe some uh, rearrangement dynamics, maybe, maybe excited state uh, uh, you know isomerization dynamics that you can follow very efficiently using, using uh, ultra fast uh, spectroscopic techniques. Okay, so, so uh, mm, and uh, use of this ultra fast lasers you know you can probe transition state uh, for which uh, uh, Ahmed, uh, Ahmed Zewel is uh, awarded a uh, Nobel Prize in 1999. So, that is uh, uh, you know that is also uh, using ultra fast spectroscopic I mean he used ultra fast spectroscopic techniques to, to probe this transition state. So, I know use of this ultra fast uh, techniques we can really probe transition state. I mean, I mean long time back when we, uh, when people started to think about the mechanism, I mean mechanism and also the theory of reaction, uh, chemical reaction, then uh, this transition state, state theory was implemented. And uh, after a long time, after waiting for a long time, after the advent of uh, ultrafast lasers, we are now able to <coughs> look into this transition states by means of uh, uh, by means of uh, ultrafast by using ultrafast spectroscopy. Okay. <coughs> so, it is a uh, you know ultrafast spectroscopy is a nice gift to mankind for proving such process fast processes which is completed within within uh, the persistence of vision much much uh, you know uh, much much uh, short in shorter time. Okay. Maybe several uh, you know million times uh, faster than the uh, uh, persistence of vision. Okay. So, long time back people even could not think of uh, uh, think of uh, you know a technique which can probe maybe millisecond process, but now you think it is it, it was like 10 to the power minus 3 second now it is 10 to the power minus 15 okay. maybe sub femtosecond maybe attosecond techniques I mean attosecond spectroscopy. Uh, is emerging. Okay, so, attosecond techniques are, are you know uh, slowly emerging, means it is faster than your uh, femtosecond. Okay, so, we discussed you know uh, probing, I means probing of transitions, we, we gave some example. Okay. Next, uh, we discussed uh, this uh, reaction dynamics. Okay. Now, why do we need means we, we discussed many things it, it appeared to you that maybe it is it is complete I mean we should not uh, think of anything else maybe measuring rate constant then then probing ultra fast processes fast processes maybe maybe you know uh, uh, probing your transition state that is all we can think of but but one one important point that we we must look into is it in a typical kinetic study rate constant which is determined i mean what we determine you know in 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 laboratory like using burette pipette maybe doing some you know uh, titrimetric method uh, <coughs> the rate constants which are determined uh, is highly an average quantity okay it's an average quantity it's an you know uh, ensemble average quantity the combined outcome of large number of individual collisions between reactant molecule. Okay. So, there are there are number of collisions. So, it, it is the overall thing, okay. whether whether you know uh, you know some collision is uh, is very vigorous or maybe some collisions are very less effective. So, everything it is the combined I know combined effect. Okay. So, everything uh, 
everything uh, it's 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 in uh, in average form okay it is basically an average quantity so uh, so uh, so in the, we, we have no idea it, it, there is no mi microscopic description as i as i started with that there are two aspects one is microscopic aspect another is macroscopic aspect so determination of red constant it's an average quantity so it's a, it's a macroscopic aspect so we do not have any idea of your microscopic uh, uh, you know things like speed okay at at actually uh, understanding at the molecular level we have no uh, no you know understanding on the other hand this chemical reaction dynamics study has the aim to understand chemistry in detail okay so we want to know chemistry at the molecular level okay not in the you know average level not in the in the in the gross level but in the in the you know molecular level at the molecular level okay so we it aims to understand chemistry in detail by probing chemical reactions okay so now we have to probe chemical reaction at a level of single reactive collision between molecules okay at a level of single reactive collision between molecules okay so uh, so we want to we want to we want to uh, approach to um, understanding at the molecular level okay and it is possible to control you know uh, the speed the quantum states like as i discuss like this quantum state selection even orientation even orientation uh, of the colliding molecules okay uh, to find out the effect of these variables so these are the variables okay i mean speed is one 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 variable quantum say selected quantum state then orientation these are very important uh, variables that can control control uh, the chemical reaction okay so that we want to uh, want to have a clear cut understanding at the molecular level means how this is going to affect the overall thing and preferably in the in the gas phase it is it is easy to you know control okay so this study gives us insight into basic physics underlying chemical reactivity okay so this way we we want to probe uh probe the you know probe the basic physics underlying chemical reactivity i mean i mean uh, from the from true purely physical aspect we want to study okay what is the what is the orientation i mean what is the orientation factor or maybe what is the speed factor or whether the reaction occurs uh, uh, in the ground state or maybe occurs in the vibrational excited state if it occurs in the vibrational excited state then what happens like i i, I discussed one thing like early transition state and late transition state so so what is happening when it is it is uh, you know vibrationally excited or it is translational excited so these are the things that that gives you a important idea about the nature of the potential energy surface which is involved in the chemical reaction so potential energy surface is important so so earlier when we talked about energy of activation it is basically giving you the barrier height but it does not give you any insight of the of the uh, insight of the you know uh, nature of the potential energy surface involved so these studies i mean this uh, reaction dynamic studies will give you the the potential energy surface i mean the nature of the potential energy surface involved whether it is it has got single minima or it has got a double minima or something else whether there is a, there is a level crossing okay i mean wh whether there is a crossing uh, with uh, you know uh, with a with an unbound state then what is going to happen like i uh, i gave you the example of sodium iodide decomposition there is there is a crossing between you know this ionic potential uh, uh, energy diagram and also your um, covalent one okay at 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 certain distance they are crossing so if your wave packet is moving back and forth and if it is uh, appropriately excited i mean in the vibrational excited so that it can cross you know it can reach this crossing point so that your ionic surface i mean uh, ionic uh, from it, it means the uh, your uh, uh, wave packet can be transferred from your ionic surface to the covalent one and thereby it may undergo dissociation so these aspects 
you know are very important. So, this gives you the idea of the potential energy surface. Okay. So, so looking at the potential energy surfaces is very very important and a very important aspect in 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 in, in molecular dynamics. Okay, I mean molecular reaction dynamics. So, this is very important. So, that is why we, we intend to uh, study uh, uh, reaction dynamics. So, it gives you the idea of the I mean nature of the potential energy surface envelope and what is the minimum energy path. Okay. So, and uh, means uh, so these these are the things that that we can we can know different mechanisms we we, we discussed like uh, harpoon mechanism okay as for example harpoon mechanism we discussed uh, then uh, you know rebound dynamics then uh, the, and and so on and various experimental techniques like molecular beam we we dealt with then uh, then also like ultrafast techniques these are very important with respect to you know uh, studies of uh, reaction dynamics so we 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 all uh, we 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 dealt with these things and molecular whenever it is the question of molecular beam then it's a cross molecular beam experiment okay so cross molecular beam like two beams are are you know cutting like this and you have detected a somewhere over here so that you can detect the scattered product okay and 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 whenever when it is the question of potential energy surface we can we can uh, have a you know quantum mechanical way of calculating it, although we have not discussed that in detail. So, so, uh, so molecular beam experiment and uh, other experimental techniques and special detection techniques uh, that we all, all uh, you know I we, we discussed all these things. Okay, and also the um, how this uh, beam angle you know changing the beam angle what is the outcome that we also have discussed. So, and also uh, probing the transition state. Okay. These are these are the important you know things that we discussed under the heading uh, of you know, your uh, molecular uh, reaction dynamics. And lastly, we also talked about this uh, uh, corrosion kinetics, I mean not in detail, but we gave you the idea uh, of uh, corrosion kinetics I mean how to measure corrosion uh, etcetera. So, uh, so these are uh, th th these are the things that we have uh, talked about uh, here. So, at the end it appears that so we go back to the to that slide I mean uh, early slide again that uh, uh, that chemical kinetics it is it is the aspect which uh, uh, aspect in an important aspect in, in chemistry that affects everyday life as i told you uh, this movement of an insect it is also a chemical reaction because it requires energy okay we move from from one place to another okay it requires energy. So, that energy is given by that energy is given given by some reaction that is some reaction happens within our body I mean within within cell that generates the energy and that is used up okay, to do some work. So, again it is it is thermodynamics. So, so because of chemical reaction energy is released and that is used up for doing some work. Okay. So, it is you know conversion of uh, chemical energy into you know mechanical energy. So, here also means like when we when we require to work fast then fast generation of your of your uh, uh, energy is required. So, that means there must be some machinery which controls means which you know measures the need which which you know uh, which monitors the need that we now we need more energy I mean means energy output I mean rate of output energy I mean uh, rate of giving out energy uh, is more when you need to work fast. Okay. So, again that that is that means again it is kinetics. So, we need faster kinetics. Okay. So, that is why kinetics is, is a very important thing like like something is growing like we, like we, we grow up it is also also uh, it has it has got also uh, kinetics okay so uh, 
So, these are uh, these are very uh, impo important thing and this is a very important aspects I mean kinetics and especially it is a broad heading it is you know rate process. Okay. So, how these rate, rate process influence our life, okay. how this rate process influence uh, you know other processes okay. and how this rate processes can be in influenced by external agents. Okay. How can we monitor, how can we monitor such uh, rate processes, okay. can we see the transition state I mean uh, I mean can we see the see the uh, transition state which we have postulated long time back. So, we, we answer is yes, so we, we have been able to probe okay, that is the ultimate answer okay, that we yes we, we have been able to probe. Catalyst is another important thing okay, and that changes our life. Okay. Anyway, so, uh, mm, so that is all uh, about this uh, course. So, I hope you I hope you enjoyed uh, and uh, if you have uh, any question uh, you can uh, you can uh, write to me uh, so uh, about about this uh, topic. So, you can write to me my email address is mintu at kim dot i i t k g p dot er net dot in. So, questions are welcome. I hope uh, you enjoyed uh, this series of lecture. So, uh, thanks for your patience. I wish you all the best. Thank you.